Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to Social Distance Learning, brought to you by the Liberal Gun Club. Uh, tonight, Scott will be showing us uh, the breaking down and replacing of certain parts on, a, on an AR-15 bolt carrier group. This is currently being streamed out of Zoom to Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, we probably could have done it to YouTube. I don't think it's turned on, though. Typically, we can't stream to YouTube because they don't like us handling firearms on a live stream. Uh, regardless, this will be put up on YouTube later once Paul decides to uh, edit it and make it all pretty. Uh, so everyone knows all participants but the moderators and the presenter have their video shut off and are muted. If there are questions, please put them in the Discord Q&A channel or inside the Zoom chat. Uh, we have several people watching for questions at the various locations, but the easiest way to get your question answered is to become a member and sign into Zoom so you can ask your questions live in chat. Becoming a member is inexpensive. It's only about 10 bucks a year and brings other benefits with it. After this, we're going to have our usual post social distance learning shenanigans over in the Discord. The Discord link is now in the Zoom chat, so feel free to join us there. And now, Scott, I believe, and you have a hammer out that makes everything better. So I believe you're yes. taking it away from here. All right. Well, thank you all for joining. Um, decided to come back to some more, actually more modern and useful information for a change and uh, talk about how to kind of break down uh, your AR bolt and replace all of the pieces in it, uh, you know, the wear parts. Um, and uh, just show you that you can do it yourself with a few minor hand tools and save you the, the weight and the expense of taking it into a shop to have it done or possibly have, you know, replacing the whole thing. Um, so it's, you know, the, this is a kit. This is, uh, I think, made by Delton, but uh, you can either buy all these parts individually or you can just buy them in a little kit. Uh, the kit runs, you know, $15, $20, and it contains all of the pieces to, uh, you know, the extractor, the ejector, gas rings, and pins, uh, springs, all that stuff is in the kit. So it's kind of nice, and it's, it's nice to just keep one of these in a range bag. Um, you can pick them up pretty much anywhere that sells AR parts. So if you're in the field and an extractor dies, uh, you can, you know, just salvage it out of your little kit. Uh, and I usually take, if the, if I rebuild a bolt like this, I'll keep any of the parts that aren't worn out just as a spare. Um, you'd be surprised how many people, uh, you know, I, I've revived guns on the range with used parts just to get them through a class or a, you know, afternoon. So Anyway, I figure we'll just go ahead and get started. I have the hammer simply for display because I'm somewhat known for having hammers and using them. I don't think I'll need a hammer for this, but uh, never know. Famous last words. Uh, yeah. Scott, quick question for you. Do you have uh, an AR handy that you can actually show the easiest way to remove the bolt carrier group from? Sure. Let me go grab one. Awesome. Thank you. We need like the Jeopardy sounds or something else going on. Oh, I guess it isn't that long. Yeah, this is, uh, so you just want to know how to take the bolt carrier group out of the gun to start that with? That was one of the questions in chat. Yes. Sure. All right. So you're, this is a all in one receiver, but it doesn't really matter. They're all the same. You have these two takedown pins and all you really need to do is push the uh, rear takedown pin on the shooter's right side and just you know, pull it out as far as it will go. This one's a little bit tight, so I'll have to tap it a little bit. Well, and the KP-15 lowers are reversed pin-wise. Yeah, yeah, they'll come out the other way. But so then you just break the top open like so and take your charging handle, slide it straight back, and your bolt carrier comes right out. I mean, your yeah, your bolt carrier and bolt come right out like so. And you can just set this aside for the remainder. But that's all there is to removing it from the gun. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this one because it's a little bit cleaner. And, uh, but you, know, you can see they're identical. You know, there, there's a, a few differences in AR bolts um, in the way that they're, you can see down here. Um, they're uh, cut differently here and here you can see this is hogged out a lot more 
than here. And this was done. They started doing this uh, during the Clinton era ban because an AR is fairly easy to convert to full auto. And these with the, this extended uh, area here won't run in full auto, but this one will. So that's why that's the main difference you see in a lot of these. Um, you know, they're there. You know, you can see the difference in the bolt here, too, but they'll run. They're interchangeable. No, no problem uh, running one in the other. Uh, but if you try to run this bolt in a full auto gun, it wouldn't work. So anyway, that's those are the differences. Put the pin aside. So from here, you got the bolt out of the gun and now you want to disassemble it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you have this little pin right here. It's a little uh, kind of clevis type pin. You can just grab a hook or a little screwdriver or some people with longer fingernails can pull those out. Uh, but I usually just use this little hook. Just pull straight up on it. It shouldn't be too hard to pull out. And it looks like that. It's just a little, little hook or a little uh, pin. And then from there, you just turn your bolt upright like that with the star end up and give it a tap, tapity tap, and your firing pin comes out. So you can replace that if you want. It doesn't come in the kit, uh, but it is, uh, you know, that's how you would replace it. You would just remove that pin and tap the firing pin out. Uh, set those aside. We don't need those. Next, we're going to take this um, pin out right here. This is a uh, little retainer. So I just pull it out and rotate it so that it's parallel like so. And then you can kind of just lift it out of there. It just comes right out like so. So you set that aside. You don't need it for this. Right, this bolt is dirtier than I thought. So from there, now you can just pull your bolt out and you don't need the carrier for the rest of this uh, other than to clean it and set that aside. And give them wipe off some of the surface grease and crud. Uh, so now we have our bolt. Oh, I forgot to, let me reassemble this real quick and I'm gonna, sh oh, I can show you on this bolt. Um, so one way to tell if your gas rings need replacing um, you know, it's a question that comes up quite a bit without having to, you know, disassemble everything. How do I know if my gas rings are starting to wear out? You pull, you can pull out your bolt all the way and then set it down like that. And if it drops down like that on its, under its own weight, um, the gas rings are worn out on it or worn, getting worn out. Um, so if it just, if you set it up and it just dropped like that, you probably need to pay some attention to the gas rings. So that's just a quick little tip on, on how to check them without pulling the whole thing apart. And when I say gas rings, I'm talking about these little rings right here. There should be three of them. And there's a lot of, uh, I don't want to say FUD lore, but uh, a lot of conversation about these things. And people say, oh, you don't ever want to get these little notches all aligned in a row. Um which I've actually gone to the range and tested this, lined them all up, ran the gun. It makes no difference whatsoever. That's kind of just, uh, I don't know where that, where that came from, but these will wear out. They're, they're, they're a wear part and they kind of form a seal. Um, and to replace them, uh, you'll, you'll notice there should be three of them. And if you don't see three, then it's probably time to uh, get busy and rebuild the bulb. Uh, they come in, usually you can buy them in a three pack. I, I buy them kind of like 10 at a time or 15 at a time just to have them on hand because they do wear out and to get them out. Uh, this will be the first thing that we replace on this. You just can kind of come in here and hook them with a, with any kind of a tool. A lot of times one of them will be worn out and missing. Uh, let's see if we can get one in here and get it hooked from a weird angle angle for me but just kind of grab it and kind of pull it like that just twist it around like so and that's that's how you get those out i'll just go ahead and rebuild this whole bolt while i'm in here and take the next one and you don't need to hook. You can do anything that you can kind of just reach down in here and kind of pull that edge over 
the end of the face like that. They come right off. And we'll compare these to the new ones and see if we have much wear on them. Um, but usually if I'm gonna pull them off, I'm just gonna replace them because uh, I'm already in there. And uh, so that's what they look like. That's how you pull them off. One area of your bolt that you're gonna wanna pay special attention to is this right here. This is the place where AR bolts get especially cruddy and grungy is uh, right here on this surface. So uh, a good brass brush and a good scrubbing, uh, or they make some tools for doing this, um, you know, a bolt scraper. Let's see, I think I have one right here. You don't really need it. Uh, it just makes things a little bit faster, um, but you can kind of come in here and use it to you know, break some of that carbon loose. Cause the, you know, what happens is oil and grease kind of build up on this surface and then you get a hell of a lot of gas, you know, uh, it's a gas operated gun. With that gas comes a lot of carbon buildup and crud will build up on this face. So you're gonna to wanna, to, when you clean your bolt, you're gonna to wanna to pay special attention here. And the more you do it, the less buildup you get. If you run, you know, a thousand, 5,000 rounds or something through the gun without cleaning it, this is gonna get on there like a, almost like a ceramic coating. Um, so just a heads up. Okay, so from here, you know, we have our extractor, which you can see right here on top of the gun or on the top of the bolt. And uh, if it's worn out, you'll notice it here. Well, you'll notice it when you shoot the gun and it's not pulling the uh, spent cases out of the chamber very well. And you can kind of inspect this hooked surface right here and look for damage or just wear. Um, to get it apart, there's just a pin right here up on the top and we're just gonna drive that out and be careful, there's a little spring under there. And if you're not familiar with working on guns or if you haven't worked on a lot of guns, always assume things are spring loaded and be ready for in the event that a spring pops out because so many things in guns rely on flat springs and coil springs. So, you know, it's always a good idea to kind of cover things up uh, just in the event that the spring pops out. So I'm just gonna take a little punch Oh, yeah, this is where I use my hammer, knock the pins out. So I just have a little tiny punch and I just drive that pin out like so. And here's my pin, put that aside. And so now you, your extractor just comes right out right here. And you see that. And um, you'll notice that there is a little O-ring right here. Um, so, you know, some kits come with that O-ring, some don't. Uh, this one, does it have the O-ring? I don't see it. Uh, I don't think you necessarily need it, but, uh, okay, so the O-ring comes off and there's this little bitty spring in there. You gotta get that out of there. Okay, so here's the little spring. Uh, fortunately, this one didn't, you know, go flying into space. Um, Scott, can you yeah. take the extractor that you just pulled off and hold it up to the camera a little bit closer and point with your tool as to where the yeah. spring and the O-ring came from? Yeah, there's, uh, let me get this to focus a bit here. Get the, see here. Yeah, the lighting's kind of not good for this. Yeah, there we go. Get a little reflective light on it. Um, you see that little round indentation right here? That's where yep. that that spring and O-ring sit down in here. Um, here's the, the business part of the extractor. You can see this little hooked surface. Sometimes crud builds up in there, but a lot of times they just wear out. And if you're running a whole lot of steel ammo, people say, oh, it wears out your extractor. Yeah, so what? It's a cheap part and it's easy to replace. So don't hesitate to run crappy steel cased ammo through your AR. This is the part that people freak out about but it's it's a it's a wear part anyway and it's easily replaced so don't don't let the the naysayers um uh, scare you on that so uh there yeah there's your spring and your o-ring um, next we're going to take the ejector out and this one's fun because this is one that is spring loaded you look at the bolt face and you see this little round 
like looks like a detent poking out. There's a long spring underneath there and it likes to come flying back out. So you got to be careful when you remove this, you're going to want to cover this, you know, with your hand or something to keep that spring from flying. And it, once this pin is out, it will launch this little, uh, uh, ejector into uh, low earth orbit. So just be wary of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and drive that. And the pin for that is, you can see the, the locking lugs on the bolt here. And the pin for it is just right here between a couple of the lugs right on the top of the bolt. So I'm gonna go ahead and drive that pin out. And she's with my little punch again. And doing this cautiously because I don't want to launch that spring into space there. And I am 100% I'm sure that there's a couple of these uh, springs and ejectors somewhere on the floor of my shop. Get it to pop out. It's moving. There we go. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that pin. The pin is out. Notice how I hold my thumb over it. Uh, okay. And then get the spring out. That one didn't come flying out. Maybe it's just so cruddy that it didn't. Okay. So this is what we're pulling out of there is this long spring and your ejector. You can notice the notch in the ejector right here. And that's part of what retains it as the pin kind of goes through there and you know helps retain it. But these two parts are getting replaced as well. So what we're replacing today are all of these pieces right here and the pins. So right there, I'll set those all aside and open up my little kit. Uh, yeah, they, but definitely I would recommend you do this yourself. Uh, it's, it's pretty easy. You just need a hammer and a small punch. And then I have this special tool because uh, I work on a lot of different um, guns and bolts. And this, this is a compression tool for that ejector, but, and I'll show you how it works, but you don't need it. Uh, you just have to be a little bit more careful when you set it up. So I'm going to put my new parts out. Okay. And there's our new parts kit and I set my pins aside. So there's our extractor, our ejector, ejector spring. This is our extractor spring and our three gas rings. So I'm gonna go ahead and salvage the O-ring off of the old one because it's not in the kit. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it back on there. I don't think it's necessary. Uh, some have them, some don't. I just put them on there. I mean, they wouldn't put it in the gun if it didn't have a purpose. So first thing I'm gonna do is put our gas rings on. And these go on the same way you kind of took them off. They just slide right over and you can just kind of clip them right over into that groove. Simple. Um, don't worry, they're made of spring steel. So they have a bit of flex and quite a bit of memory in them. So unless you just really yank it apart, you're not gonna damage it. So once again, I just kind of curl them over one edge. Doing this with complete lack of fingernails, but there we go. So that one's on. And let's see if we can see some, some wear difference on these. Um, you can see, I don't know if this will show up, but you can see on the old one how much thinner it is. You know, this one is much wider. This one's very thin right here and right here. And You're gonna wanna kinda, drop your hand down, Scott. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, but this is our old one and it's quite a bit thinner right here where these where this opening is. And this one's quite a bit wider. So these were worn, not completely worn out, but they're worn, so. You know, it was a good time to replace. This is usually the most common wear part on these. Uh, so they're nice to have spares. You can actually run the gun without them. Uh, you know, people say, oh, you know, the gas rings, you know, so critical, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I've actually run the gun without them just to see what it would do. And it's, uh, 
you know, it's not going to run 100% or it's not going to run beautifully, but it will run. So there they are. All three have been replaced. Super simple. Okay, now we're going to do the fun one, which is our ejector. So the ejector, you have your spring. And that, you know, before I uh, before I normally would put this together, I, of course, would clean it. I would get some uh, non chlorinate a brake cleaner or something and clean this all out and scrape it and um, you know do a really good job of getting it clean but uh, in the interest of time and watching me clean a an AR bolt isn't that exciting so go ahead and just put it back together drop the spring down through the bolt face right there make sure it's seated and then you're going to want to take your ejector and drop it in and you're gonna leave the, if I remember correctly, I haven't done this in a while, but you leave your longer point, you see the notch. I don't know if this is gonna show up really well, but you have a notch in this thing and you're gonna to want to leave the notch kind of down and the, the long part up as you put it in. So you just drop that in there like so. And if you look, this isn't going to show up on the camera, but if you look down through the uh, hole where the roll pin goes, you'll see what that notch does. And, and what it, if you push it down far enough, it gives the, the opening enough clearance to put your roll pin through. Uh, that's what retains the uh, ejector. For me, I have this neat little tool. And then what this does is it threads down on top of the bolt and it compresses that spring and moves the and holds the ejector in place. Uh, this spring, if you don't have this tool, um, it's just a little bit more difficult and it's kind of one of those weird three handed jobs uh, that you only have two hands to do. So this tool just makes it easier. And I bought it at Brownells. Uh, if you're interested in or you, you plan on doing a few of them. So you just kind of thread that down and uh, make sure you don't block your <laughs> pinhole here. Okay. Yeah. Make sure maybe I went too far on that. Just make sure I got an opening to be able to put my, hold on a second. I got to rotate this around where I can see the pinhole the pin goes through because I just blocked it with the arm of this thing. So, up, up. Okay, there we go. Now I can see it. Sorry about that. Got ahead of myself. So once again, thread it back out. Turn it where I can. I'm going to be I don't know where I can actually see what I'm doing. What was that tool called again? It, it's um, it's just a, ex, I think it's an extractor spring tool. Um, I think that's what it's called. Um, can't get it to see it on there, right? Uh, and I, I, if I recall, it's under $20, uh, but they're, they're useful to have on, um, you know, any gun that has a, uh, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, an ejector spring tool, but anything that has an ejector on the bolt face like this, it's it's pretty handy to have. It's just a, a piston that threads down and compresses that spring. So uh, yeah. trying to give myself just enough room. Oh, just fell off. Now maybe I can, Hold it down, but uh, this, I have lost many of these things doing this uh, over the years. And I finally just got tired of it and bought the tool. Uh, can't get the tool aligned though. Maybe I'll have to do it the, the old fashioned way just to speed things up. But so you need to compress that spring enough to get that roll pin in there. So, okay, then take your roll pin, put it in there. 
<clears throat> ouch. See, this, this hurts because I'm trying to compress that thing against that spring tension and uh, kind of hurts. And, beep, beep, beep. and it, this doesn't go all the way in. Um, you'll have to look through the little hole, the spring, the pin hole uh, where the pin goes to see where it seats. Uh, try it with a punch. Because what it's what you want to do is push it down enough to move that spring out of your way, All right uh, there. And then you put this in there. Well, let me grab a roll pin punch. Uh, I have a punch specifically made for this job, and it's so what it the difference is it has this little knob just on the end and it's and it seats just down into the middle of the top of that punch and it makes it a lot easier to get a roll pin started than just a conventional punch it's not 100 percent necessary but if you do a lot of them it saves you some headache so sometimes what you can do too is use your little punch as a slave pin, this is starting to hurt. What about an empty piece of brass? Is a yeah, anything to just you know go down in there. And like I said, this is one of those three-handed jobs. Okay. See, I just sent that ejector flying. I have to use the old one. I I heard it hit. <laughs> That's why I hate. Yeah, I'm going to use the tool. I'm not going to keep launching these things. So put that back in there. Get this tool. Get this to lower it. Yeah, you just just doesn't sit on there as square as I would like it to. But I get it tightened to where I could see. And a little bit more. Okay. It's funny, I always make these jobs look way harder than they are, don't I? Okay. Now you take your little roll pin punch. Get your pin started. And sometimes with roll pins, what I'll do is just kind of close up one end just a little bit, make it easier to start, or I'll take a, a little file and kind of chamfer it just a little bit to make it easier to get the pin started. You don't want to do too much of it, but just enough to get it in there, like so. Okay. Get my regular punch. Or that just a tiny bit. Okay. Now I'm going to drive that little pin home and we'll be done with this piece of it. Okay. And now I can remove this tool and you'll see that your ejector is right there. So. Now we're gonna do our extractor, which we're gonna take our new one. And we're gonna put our little, our new spring. And I'm gonna take the O-ring and just put it on the new spring like so. Just kind of wraps around there. Put it in that little indentation. Oh, oops, right there. And you kind of just set it all back in place and you can see where it aligns. It's uh, you can see the round notch. Uh, let's see if I can get some light on this correctly, but there's a round notch down in, in the slot where it fits. So it, it's pretty intuitive as to where it goes. Um, it just kind of lays on there. Plus, um, 
you'll see the claw has to come out on the bolt face. You know, otherwise it's not gonna be able to extract. So it's gonna drop, oops, right on there, like so. And this isn't too bad once it's, uh, you know, the, that little spring, putting this pin in isn't nearly as troublesome. You're so above now, the frame there, there yeah, you go. Yeah, so now you just wanna get everything aligned so you can see, you wanna see air through that hole. Put your pin in there tap at home. So there's a completely refurbished AR bolt, the extractor, extractor spring, ejector, ejector spring, and gas rings have all been replaced. And uh, so the only other thing that you might worry about on this is, that, you know, check out the lugs, the locking lugs, make sure they're not cracked or chipped or something's missing. And, uh, but, you know, that's, that's kind of hard to do, you know, if, unless you're running, you know, really spicy hand loads or you get bad, bad ammo, uh, you know, overcharged ammo will break those. But uh, for the most part, that bolt's ready to go for many thousand more thousands of rounds. And, uh, and you just, you can, I, I like to lubricate these ARs really like to run wet. Um, you know, they, uh, some guns will run fine dry. I run them, you know, I like to run them wet. So I'm gonna just gonna put some, this thin, uh, you know, I use this LH, ALG uh, Go Juice. It's just a super thin uh, lubricant. It uh, works good. You can use a grease, whatever you got. It fits back. One thing to remember when you put this back together is this pin only fits in one side of the bolt like that. So you want that larger side up. If you turn it over, this pin won't fit and you'll struggle with it. So we're just align it so that the, the wider hole is up, slide it in to your carrier and align it so you can see down in there, drop your pin in. Okay, let's go. Drop that in, okay. And then you're gonna turn, I'm gonna turn this retaining pin 90 degrees, drop your firing pin in like so. Okay, and now you just take your little- Before you do that, Scott, you had uh -huh. the, the bolt carrier group up out of frame. Can you show the firing oh, sure. pin again? Yeah, so- um, what you're gonna to want to do when you when you get this this uh, this pin right here, the one we drop down through, you want to turn it 90 degrees. Um, so, because what that does you're is you're back it out of frame again. Jeez. Oh, okay. Well, it's such a narrow. All right. So you have this pin right here that we just dropped through to retain the bolt. You're gonna to want to turn that 90 degrees like so, because there's a hole in it that allows the firing pin to move back and forth. So once that's done, you drop your firing pin through the back. I can't see what I'm doing because of the camera angle. So that just drops. You can drop it in this way if you need to. And that just goes straight in like that. And so now our firing pins down through, it's passed through the channel on this piece. And now you can put your uh, cutter key back in. So this just goes straight back in. And you know, you're gonna wanna replace this once in a while. Sometimes these get bent or people hammer on them to try to get them back in because they're a little bit stiff, but it should push in and it should go down below the surface of the bolt carrier right there. So there it's completely done. A firing pin and everything is back in the gun. Oops, I didn't capture the firing pin on that one. But anyway, that's it. That's all there is to doing these. It's pretty straightforward. And, um, you know, I, people make it sound more difficult or more complicated than it really is. It's a very simple thing to do with minimal hand tools. And, you know, 15, 20 bucks for the kit is a pretty affordable thing to do instead of, you know, replacing a $100 bolt. Um, and, you know, the parts, 
uh, you know, you get what you pay for, but you know, you can, if you, if you're on a budget, you can get a Palmetto state armory kit, uh, or whatever you, you know, whatever you want, whatever you got and, um, do it yourself. So I'd like to also run some lubricant. I, I, I probably over lubricate these things. If you're out in the field and your gun isn't running right, or it's brand new and short stroke in a little bit, put some oil in these two little spots right here. And that lets oil get down in to this surface that the bolt rides in and uh, just kind of work it back and forth. So there you go. It's a completely rebuilt AR-15 bolt. So, Excellent. Think, Thank you. I don't have any additional questions from chat. So I'm going to say thanks. Uh, appreciate it. We had some good interaction in chat. I'm going to uh, turn off the streaming here.